Hello and good morning. Grab your favorite coffee because we are on the Katie Speaking Live True Podcast. Woo! It's going to be a great time. We are shifting. If you've been following us, we've been talking a lot. We, me and myself and I, have been talking a lot about uh, sexual abuse recovery. We're shifting gears a little bit because the four big categories of life include faith, finances, fitness, and family and relationships. And we're going to cover all of those on this podcast to inspire you to live true from a place that God has called you to live from, from his word being influenced in your life and you having the courage to say yes to his good and perfect will for you. If that's a great big yes, then I want to hear from you at katie at katiespeaking.com. I would love to know that you're listening and how this podcast inspires you. I am a top life and business coach. I'm also an Amazon bestselling, two-time bestselling author on Amazon. Woo! Thank you for your support. And um, I'm a speaker as well. I love inspiring my audiences to get the outcomes that they are after in their lives, whether that's in their, if they're youth or if they're adults, all areas of life. I just love coming and bringing a a message of hope and inspiration. And that's what we're going to do on this podcast today. So today we're talking about finances. And if you're discouraged about your finances, this is for you. So grab your favorite beverage. (laughs) We're going to have a good time together because your old Auntie Katie is going to share some stories with you. We'll also be talking about a couple of principles that will be guardrails when you are feeling discouraged that will help you stay the course because sometimes, oh my gosh. All right, let's just jump right in. So uh, when my husband and I were engaged, um, I was in college studying broadcast journalism. He was in seminary at Westminster Seminary in San Diego. And uh, we look, we knew he had a lot of student debt. I didn't know how much, but um, that's a that's a really important question, by the way, if you're counseling anybody related to dating, um, whoever they date, y'all need to be transparent about your finances before you get engaged. So um, my husband was a Dave Ramsey fan. I was a Dave Ramsey fan, but um, I had a like 2,500 in student loans. He had um, quite a bit more in student loans. And I didn't find out until after we were married, but we knew that it was going to be a lot. And we knew that we didn't want to start our lives with debt. So this is what we did. Brian had, my Brian, my husband had uh, seen an episode of Oprah Winfrey where Dave Ramsey uh, talked about Financial Peace University and Dave Ramsey had brought a couple on who had been truck drivers and they had sold everything to become truck drivers. And I think they had like two or three hundred thousand dollars in debt. And this was back in 19. 19- 99. So that would be like today's equivalent, probably like half a million bucks in debt. Oh, to me, that's a staggering amount of debt. Um, <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of debt for other people, but that, that's a lot of debt for me. And that was a lot of debt for them. And they, they decided they didn't want to just get by. Like they were living beyond their means. They made good money, but not enough to Um, overcome the interest payments and stuff like that. So when my husband told me about their story, he's like, would you ever consider being a truck driver? And honestly, you know, I was so in love with my husband. I just wanted to be with him. I was like, okay, we get to travel and we'll be together. Yeah, sure. Why not? I had never even been to a truck stop. I mean, I was 21 years old, had never even been to a truck stop. Um, so I really didn't know what I was getting into, but, but I said, well, let's, let's find out if the debt amount is really possible to pay off. Like, are we really going to make a significant amount of money? And by living in the truck, we could save on housing expenses. And we knew we were living in Southern California at the time I was living up with my mom while I went to college that year. And, um, Brian was living up in an apartment at seminary and we knew that, um, like we kept looking for like a one bedroom and it was, it was prohibitive. Like it was ridiculously expensive and I was working, <laughs> but he was in school full time, getting his master's degree full time in seminary. It's like not really conducive to working while you do that. So um, we were just like, we've got to do something radical. And so we call, I remember the day I called Western truck school in San Diego. It's still there. And I talked to the manager and I'm like, you know, how much money are we talking about making in a year? And I forget what he said, but the the number was good. <clears throat> I said, okay, that's more than I can make right now. Um, you know, I was working for a CPA and I was also an intern at a news station. I was working all the time and I wasn't getting paid enough to make a significant difference in our budget. And so, um, 
I, I, I was like, let's go, let's do this. Let's become truck drivers. So I dropped, I left school. I didn't drop out. I left school. Brian left seminary. We, in four weeks, we both, we got our CDLs, our commercial driver's license. Um, it was an investment. I think we each had to pay $6,000. So we added some debt. Um, and then uh, we went on the road and uh, four days after we were married, we got in a semi truck. We were trucking for Covenant Transport. We had a third person in the truck with us, which was a, a surprise. Um, I mean, I knew we were going to have a trainer, but I didn't know how long it was going to be that he was going to be with us. I thought it was just going to be three weeks. Um, so we were in a semi truck. It ended up being six weeks for six weeks with this little man. He was my same height. His name was Russell Barr and he had been a former Green Beret and he looked just like Chuck Norris. And um, he taught us how to drive. And really, I mean, oh my goodness, the principles from Russell Barr. <laughs> So like, it didn't matter how bad the weather was. He was like, we're not, you're not pulling over. There's tornado warnings, whatever, mash it. <laughs> and that was something he would often say is mash it. And what that meant was uh, put the gas pedal to the floor. <laughs> you're not stopping. I remember our first cross country trip, we went from uh, like, I think it was like Covina or some place that starts with a C in LA County, Los Angeles County, California, all the way to New Jersey. And we drove straight through the rain. And I, I, I kid you not, I believe that the water was like a foot deep on the highway, but we did not stop. We didn't even slow down. <laughs> Russell was like, pedal to the metal, girl. Go, go, go. And um, my husband uh, has always struggled with his eyesight. So I was the night driver with Russell. And he's like, go, go, go. And um, I'm not proud of this, but he's the only person outside of family that I don't know if I should share you this. This is not good. Like, okay, I'm going to share this, but um, this is how mad Russell made me is that I said something I shouldn't have said to him at him uh, one time. And of course I apologize later, but um, there was a lot of frustration happening, but what happened that was so great. We made it to New Jersey and I saw the newspaper the next day and it said like people had literally died in the storm. Um, and it wouldn't have been the next day. It would have been like three days later. But anyway, U.S. News World Report was like, yeah, people died in St. Louis. And I'm like, we were in St. Louis. We drove through that storm and people died. And we didn't. And we learned how to be truck drivers. And we did that for 16 months. And in 16 months, we paid off $33,000 in debt. Um, I think we made like just 52000 in 16 months. So not a lot of money. Um and we probably spent way too much on buying audiobooks and Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew and gummy bears. <laughs> Cuz we would literally like sit, you know, can't you you can't go to sleep. You have to like stay awake. Now I know other ways to stay awake um like that are healthy, but but really no, I try to go to bed every night now <laughs> at 10 o'clock. <laughs> but back then we had a goal and we had a vision. And that's what I want to tap into right now is if you are discouraged about your financial goals and your financial vision, what you want your life to look like, this podcast is for you. So give me a big high five. I'm so glad you're here to join me. And I want you to share this with others because, um, you know, there is hope. There is hope. And so we're going to read a couple of Bible verses. We're going to talk about some principles of finance. Give me a yes, ma'am, if you're excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. So, um, you know, here's the thing. Anything that we love more than God, God is going to expose that thing and frustrate that thing. Anything that we love more than God, God is going to expose and frustrate. And so we paid off $33,000 in debt. And, um, we left trucking because three things happened in a row. And I was like, I'm done. I am tapped out. And there, I wish I had had me as a coach back then because I could have helped myself to change my situation and not be so stuck. And this is the power of having somebody outside yourself tell you the truth in love. So get somebody outside yourself that you can trust. You can tell you the truth in love. So uh, we had three things happen in September of 2001. The first one was we found out we were having a baby. I will talk about that on another episode, another podcast, because I'll tell you, we were using four different forms of birth control and that baby still happened. And so <laughs> he was meant to be here and he is a force to be reckoned with. He is uh, favored by God and 
truly a light in our lives. And he just loves the Lord and is serving God in huge, huge ways. It's such a joy. He's tw- going to be 21 next month. Um, so that was Gabriel. And uh, <laughs> Gabriel was strike one. Strike two happened four days later. Strike two happened four days later. And that was when uh, 9-11 happened. You might have remembered waking up on the morning of 9-11. It was an absolutely beautiful day. We were actually at my mother-in-law's house uh, for, we had a, some time off. We would, we would drive straight for more than six weeks at a time. Like sometimes it would be eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks without a break. Uh, not even kidding. And so, but this particular weekend, uh, right after the weekend, we were still at my mother-in-law's house. I was really sick with morning sickness we just found out we were having a baby and 911 happened. And when that happened, um, all the truckers were sent a warning that um, fuel stops, trucks with um, high toxin loads, that those would all be targeted. And I don't know if that's true or not. I, I Now I think that was fear mongering, but at the time it, it worked. I was like, oh my gosh, we, we decided we would keep driving because we hadn't reached our financial goal. We were thinking we were going to drive for like five or six years, have enough money to buy land and a house for cash. And also we both wanted to get PhDs. I now know you don't need a PhD for what we wanted to do, but that's what we wanted to do at the time. And, um, God like allowed those plans to be shortcutted. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, the third strike happened also in September at the end of the month, or might have been October by this point. Um, I was driving. If you've ever driven on I 40, let's see, I 40 eastbound uh, going into Albuquerque, New Mexico. If you've ever done that, let me know. Um, But if you're driving eastbound, like you go down into the city, like the elevation goes down, it's high desert in in, uh, New Mexico. And so you're hitting, if you're a truck driver, you're hitting the brakes the whole way down and it stinks. It's like burning rubber. And so for like a half an hour, 45 minutes, you're smelling these toxins. And then as you're um, in the city, it kind of levels out. And then as you drive back, I don't know why I'm going into such great detail about this. I promise it relates to the story. Okay. Anyway, so as you (laughs) continue out of Albuquerque, um, you're going up a mountain. And so um, as you're going up this mountain, um, it was the middle of the night and my husband knowing now that we're going up the mountain, he was asleep. I'm the night driver. He opens up these, we have these vinyl curtains to block out noise. And um, I don't know if they still have these in trucks, but anyway, vinyl curtain, he rips open the vinyl curtain and he's like, Katie, turn on the light. And I turn on the light inside the cab. Then right above my head is a layer of smoke and it fills the upper cab. There's smoke all in the upper cab. And so the, the, obviously there's something on fire in the, in the truck. And so we pulled off the truck on the side of the road. It's like 3 AM. I'm like eight or nine or 10 weeks pregnant at this point. I don't know how pregnant I am, but the baby's still tiny, tiny little baby. The brain is forming. And all I can think about is the toxins are poisoning my baby's brain. And, um, so we got out of the truck and, um, our com- you know, obviously our company, they were going to like fix the truck and everything. They fixed it, but they, we had to throw away everything in the truck, like all of our clothes. If you live in your truck, everything you have basically is in the truck with you that you need. And so all my clothes, everything, we had to throw it all away. The toxins were so strong and we couldn't wash it out. We washed and washed and washed it. It wouldn't come out. And so, um, our trucking company, they said, we're going to, um, we're not going to replace your truck. We're just, you know, we're going to fix what was broken. There was an electrical fire under the dashboard. And, um, and then, uh, after that, um, thank you. Whoever said goodbye. I can't see who the name is. So thanks for stopping by. I uh, appreciate it. I'm going to go look you up after this. Um, so the truck was on fire. We had to stop trucking. Our company wasn't going to replace the truck. They weren't going to give us a new truck, even though I was pregnant. And even though the cab was now poisoned with toxic smells and fumes, we drove from, uh, wherever we were in New Mexico at that point where the truck got towed to, we drove from there to San Diego with the windows down. It's like, so it's a couple thousand miles or something. It's over a thousand miles. And, um, and that was really hard. Like that was a crushing experience because we didn't hit our financial goals. Even though we paid off 33,000 in debt, we didn't hit all of our financial goals. And I allowed that to really infect my mindset. And I, I just want to tell you, if you're in a hard place and you're like, girl, you don't know, I've been working so 
hard to see change happen. And I haven't seen it happen yet. I just, I want to encourage you that God sees you, that if you're walking in his ways, like let today be the day that you turn from your ways to his ways. If you're not already walking in his ways. And if you're still frustrated about money, like you are not alone, let's go to the scriptures about what God says about money and resources. All right. All right. So in Job 1, uh, 21, it says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. In first Chronicles 29, 12 through 16, it says all riches and wealth come from you, meaning God, you rule everything by your strength and your power, and you are able to make anyone great and strong. Okay. Um, and then, and then there's another principle here. Um, and this is one that I just think is so important for anyone, but if you're listening to me, you're probably a hard worker. That's, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. <laughs> I already know you're working hard. I already know you're putting in the hours. I know you're putting in the time. This is to encourage you and remind you that A, you're not alone. B, God sees you. Uh, C, it, there are some principles we need to follow that God will bless over time. And it, it comes from his hand. Everything on this earth belongs to God. All wealth, all glory, all honor, everything. It's his first and foremost. And then there is a there is a power of this world that is at play, which is the enemy. And so if God is not allowing you to prosper, and I will, if God is not allowing you to prosper, we look at, at what we can control. And then after examining ourselves, the Bible says to examine yourself daily. If we examine ourselves, we look at what we're doing. We're looking at how we're being responsible for the effort we put out. We're looking at how the work that we're doing is the job that we're in. Is it time to level up? Is it time to step out in faith? And, um, and this is what we base our, our, um, principles on Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ Jesus. So if you're struggling, if you're like, man, I am in a job and it is really frustrating. It is really hard. I am not making the money I need to make to make progress. If you're like, I don't want to be in debt anymore. I have a 10 year vision. I have a 20 year vision. I have a 40 year vision. I've got goals, right? Like one of the hardest things that happened to me um, after becoming a coach. Um, and this is really hard. Like when you set your goals and then they don't happen, that is hard. And I just want you to know if you're doing the work, um, it's okay to adjust those goals and to say, okay, what is working? What isn't working? And I'm telling you, I do that on a weekly basis. I have my annual goals. I have my quarterly goals. Sometimes those are too big and we have to go really narrow it down. What is happening in my finances right now? So like the week before Easter, um, was just a big awakening moment for me because, um, I'll just be real with you. Actually, I was sharing this with somebody that I, I met and they were like, you need to tell this in a podcast. So let me tell you this story. Um, last summer, I left an anchor client um, because there was a cap on how much I could make with them. And at the time, um, that's what they needed to do for their company. But for me, for me, I was just getting by. I was barely getting by. I had nothing to save. And if you're in a job where you're giving everything that you've got, and you don't have money to save, it's time to rethink what we're doing, right? So I had to rethink what I was doing. Um, and also at the same time, God was really stirring in me to step in <laughs> to the dreams and visions of my heart and to really um, work as hard for myself as I was willing to work for other people. And that is a real change too, because you can, you're confronted with your own self-worth, you know, am I worth working that hard for? Is my dream worth working that hard for? And I'm here to say, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. So, um, I met this awesome lady and she was, um, she, we went to dinner together and she was like, so tell me about your life. You know, where are you at? And I'm like, okay, so this is what happened last summer. I left my anchor client and I was convinced because I had a wait list with clients who were already paying between 10 grand, 15 grand, 25 grand a year to this organization. I was convinced that if I made an offer for, um, just six people, because I just wanted to pour into six, I had been working. I had a slate of 40 seven clients per week at one point. 
and last year, and I was just burned out. And, um, I was like, I can't work this many hours, but this is because of the agreement. This is what I needed to do to make ends meet. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to make a different offer. I'm going to just do like six clients, 50,000 for the year. And I'm going to give them incredibly focused attention. I'm going to run their marketing plans. I'm going to write their copy. I'm going to do their market analysis. I'm going to literally hold their hand through every step of the process, probably do a lot of it for them or find vendors that can do it for them. And that that's my plan. Well, I was talking with one person and it looked like they were on board and then they fell through and then talk about opposition. Then the opposition really started to flow in. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to talk about coaching anymore for a while. I'm going to get my paperback book done. So I took about six weeks, learned that entire process myself, got my paperback book out is Katie seventh grade prayer journal.com. But then now it's like eight weeks after leaving that company and I still had no clients. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So then I put on a virtual event. Woo! <laughs> had about 35 people register for the event. Um, and yet it didn't bring in all those people were connected with all but one were connected with um, the organization that I worked for. So they couldn't hire me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is not going. So then I was like, okay, no problem. I know how to do Facebook ads. I'm going to put a thousand dollars in Facebook ads. Um, my son was like, oh, totally mom, you got this. Put a thousand dollars in Facebook ads. So I put a thousand dollars in Facebook ads. Um, and got a 500 people clicked on the ad, which is great. That is awesome for a thousand dollar ad spend to get 500 people clicking, but nobody registered. And I was like, what? Um, I had, if nobody registered from the ads and I was like, what's going on? And I only ran the ad for like three days. And so to get 500 people clicking on your ad is amazing return on your ad spend. Like that's incredible. Um, but the ad was broken. It took six weeks with Facebook to figure out what went wrong. By that time, the money was already gone. They wouldn't give me a refund. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, so now we're like 10 weeks out, no new income. And I'm like, oh, um, so I, I'm like, no problem. I'm going to get on the phone with some of my former clients that have nothing to do with my, uh, the anchor client that I just left. These are people I worked with before. Cause I was a coach before I worked with this organization and I just called them up and I'm like, Hey, um, this is what I'm charging for the year. How about this? I know that you still have projects that you want to see come to fruition. You have a vision you want to see happen. Um, I'll work with you for a year on this contract. You don't pay me until you see results. How about that? And so um, I signed three clients that way. Then I had another client come in on a different contract. And so I was like, all right, I got four clients. All right. And I was just expecting things to happen and they didn't happen. And then it was November and no new paid clients. And then it was December and no new paid clients. And then it was January and no new paid clients. And then I got COVID and I was really sick for a month. And I was like, I am willing to do anything to change my situation. And so when you're willing to do anything to change your situation, um, it's okay. You just go. So if you're discouraged and if you're hurting right now and you're like, what am I going to do? I, I got to do something to generate more income. Now, at the same time, a miracle happened, but it wasn't my miracle. And this is how God works sometimes. Okay. So my husband was diagnosed with lupus in uh, February of 2020, right before COVID hit. And what that meant for him was he ended up quitting working. He had to quit working, um, and literally could not function for about two years, two years, um, over two years. Um, he could go on walks and there's a whole story of how God healed him. And I cannot wait for him to start doing health coaching. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so amazing. We're going to be such an awesome team, but it hasn't happened yet. So, um, but the healing started in him a while ago. And then in the middle of all these things that I was trying to generate new clients and God not opening the doors, my husband said, I think I'm ready to, um, to go back to work, but I can't go back to work as a professor or like ministry leader. I can't do any of that. I just can't deal with people. Um, 
I'm going to go back to truck driving. And I was like, that's not what I want you to do, but okay. And he started looking into all these jobs and it, all of them, I kid you not, all of them said no, because he hadn't driven in the last three years and he had to have driving experience in the last three years in order to get a job. And I'm like, so desperate. You guys last fall was so painful and so desperate. Like I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning, having anxiety attacks. Um, it was, it was scary. It was really scary. And, um, yeah, like I'm just grateful that we were already in an arrangement where we didn't lose our housing because otherwise we would have, I don't know what would have happened. Like that was God's provision. And then one day, um, I had just taken my mom to the airport and I was driving home from the airport in her car because, oh, that was the other thing that happened right after I left that anchor client, my car engine blew. And so we, we haven't had a car all this time. And I'm telling you this to inspire you to keep going and to keep working on your principles of finances, because God is going to be your provider. God is going to see you through. Okay. So October, November, November now, and, uh, um, I'm driving back from the airport and I look over and there's a big old semi truck beside me. And it says Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is where we live right now. And so this trucking company is based in Hendersonville. And I was um, either I was I wasn't driving because then I'm the one who then called. So somebody else was driving. I think it was my husband. Um, and I called the trucking company. I said, are you guys hiring? And they're like, yeah, we are. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. OK. And so um, my husband ends up getting on the phone with them. Long story short, he's been driving for them ever since. And it is the exact monthly average as I was making working for that other company. I kid you not. So it's not enough to get ahead, but it's just enough to feed our family and like pay our cell phone bills. I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing? But I'm telling you this because you are going to be, if you're walking with the Lord, he's the one who gives and he's the one who takes away. Your job is to keep your eyes on Jesus. With your finances, your job is to know what he says about money and do things his way. So what this means is we're not going to get freaked out in fear and start borrowing payday loans. We're not going to do that. Um, maybe you go to your church if you're in a good church and you ask them for help. Maybe you go to friends and family, you ask them for help. I, I That's what you got to do sometimes. So you let your requests be made known. And you thank God because he is going to work a solution for you that you don't even know about yet. He is going to work a solution for you that you don't even know about yet. So as I was getting better, <laughs> hey, Bobby, <laughs> I owe you a phone call. <laughs> so as um, as I was getting better from COVID in February, um, there was this restaurant that had just moved locations and it was one exit down from where I live and we live not far from the freeway. And I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, if I have to walk to this restaurant, I can walk to this restaurant. So I've never been a server. I've never worked in a restaurant, but I'm like, I am spinning my wheels here and I'm reaching out to people. I'm doing the calls. I'm doing the work as best I can. I've got to do something. So I, hey, I'm starting to see some of your comments. This is great here. Hold on. Let me click. Some of my favorite people are on the thread. Oh, yeah. There's Greg's here. Gina's here. Bobby's here. So good to see you guys. Okay. So you guys, this is what's been happening behind the scenes. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so I applied at this restaurant because I could see whenever we drove by that the parking lot was always full. And I'm like, they've got customers. And I talked to one of my, um, Oh, I've got Naylor here. Oh my gosh. We've got so many of my favorite people here. Okay. You guys will love this. Some of you have been walking with me in this a little bit. And I just want to tell you, like, God is so good. Okay. So, uh, I haven't even gotten to the principles yet. I hope y'all are encouraged and having a good time listening to this struggle because the Bible says that when we go through trials, it is so uh, we will have our character developed. This is in Romans and maybe somebody can post it in the comment. Our character gets developed. We grow as human beings and the end result is hope, not in ourselves, but in Christ. 
our hope is in Christ. And so anyway, I went to the, um, the restaurants called Texas Roadhouse. And for my local friends, I'll be there this weekend. <laughs> I don't think I'll be there very much longer. Shh, don't tell my boss. Um, but, uh, but I, I am, I'm working there right now and I'm like, Lord, literally I will do whatever you want me to do. And so if this is the door that opens, I'm going to go through it. And I kid you not, this is the only door that opened in February. <laughs> so I've learned how to be a waitress and I'm getting pretty stinking good at it. And um, it's a lot. It is really stressful. And so then I'm like, I'm like, if I work a shift, I'm like done for the next day. So this is not sustainable. And for you, as you're looking for job options and you're looking for solutions, like, Sometimes we just have to get into action to break whatever the cycle is that's happening and start a new cycle. And I'll tell you, I have been so blessed. I have met so many beautiful young people who do not know Jesus, probably have never met a real believer. And I just get to be there and be me. And I'm like, I am a hard worker. <laughs> hey, I'll work just as hard as a 19 year old. Let's go. <laughs> And, um, and, you know, the endorphins that get released from movement is great. So um, it's exhausting. I I'm not going to lie. I have to take an Epsom salt bath like every day after my shift. Um, every night I'm like drinking tea. I've like realized now I can't do the night shifts because I get home so late. It throws off my rhythms. Like I'm like, Jesus, you're in charge of the 20. So this is for you now. OK, so now we're moving from story to principle. This is for you. Every single one of us only gets 24 hours in a day and either God is your provider or he's not. So what that means for you is you get to take jobs or, you know, angel investor jobs, whatever, that are in agreement with what you know you have to do to take care of yourself. So like I didn't real, I don't know why I didn't realize this, but I didn't realize that I wasn't going to be leaving the restaurant until like sometimes 11 or 12 at night. Like that is late um, for somebody. I. I know biologically that I can only do that for a little while, like a month, and then it's going to start affecting my health. And that's true. Even if you're young, just people don't pay attention when they're young and that's how autoimmune diseases develop. So don't do it. Um, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to only take shifts on Saturdays and Sundays, um, during the middle of the day, because that allows me to get home. But I realize those middle of the day shifts are just as exhausting as other things. So I'm like, all right, Lord Jesus help, you know? And so, um, I had good Friday off of work. Thank you, Lord. And I just made a list of a bunch of different people or organizations, um, actually that I was praying for. And as I did that, the Lord brought a couple of different people to mind and I just texted them to check in with them. And this is what happened. One of them texted me back that day, like my prayer request. He's like, I just talked to my principal at my school. He's going to create a position for you. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I have 11 years of teaching experience because I was a homeschooling mom. I also worked for Teach for America for a short stint doing certifications of and um, placements. So I've got, I've got experience in education, more education experience than that. But I was like, that is amazing. Like who gets a text back that a major school district and a major city that a principal at a really good school is making a position for them? Okay. That's Jesus opening doors. <laughs> then I reached out to, um, oh, I don't want to say who yet, another organization that I love. And I was just like, y'all have any openings? And I used to work for them. Um, before when I was on air for them and, uh, they said yes. And I was like, okay. And then I keep getting yeses. So I don't have the job yet, but I keep getting yeses. And I'm like, Lord, you know, that my vision is to speak and encourage and empower other people that you are not a victim of your circumstances. You can trust God. You can work the steps, right? We only get 24 hours in a day. How are you going to best use your 24 hours? And so this is the fire that's under me. So if you're watching me do all these podcasts, this is why I don't know how long I'm going to have the time freedom to put out these content, um, these podcasts, but I hope it's for the rest of my life. This is what I want to be doing. I want to be telling you stories that encourage you to keep going, that say, don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Let him be the anchor for your soul. Keep going after the things that he's put in your heart. It is my heart's desire to be debt free. I'm not there yet, but I'm already thanking God in advance for what he is going to do in my life to help me provide sources of uh, services and books and resources and courses that are going to so impact people at a price point that is agreeable to y'all. <laughs> 
that I can then, you know, not only pay off debt, but start saving money and investing for the future, because I don't think it's a sin for you and for me to be financially free. Can I get an amen? I don't see that in scripture. I see that there is knowledge and wisdom to be gained and that it is okay to learn the skills to create resources and to create long-term passive income. I think that's a gift from God. And as Christians, we get to be the ones who should be leading the industry, leading the industry wherever you are in great ideas that solve problems. So amen to all of that. I hope this is putting a fire under you um, and, and really encouraging you and empowering you because that is why you're on this planet. You are here to be a voice in your circle, your family, your community, your sphere of influence and may God bless and grow your sphere of influence according to his word that you are going to set other people free in Christ and in resources. Um, okay. So I want to read this to you. It's from Psalm 50. It's one of my favorite passages. I always read it like this. God owns cattle on a thousand hills and he owns a thousand hills too. And then I say, my daddy owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns a thousand hills too. That is your God. So let's just read it from the word. <laughs> That's right. I know. I know, Bobby, if you were on at the beginning, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That's Job 121. Absolutely right. But if you are a child of God, you get to have hope in all areas of your life, not because, oh, I'm going to be rich, but because, oh, my father in heaven knows my need before I even ask. And I get to ask him for what I need. And he knows what I need. And he knows what I like. You know, either he's true or he's not. And if he's true, he's worth trusting completely. And if he's not true, then we're all to be pitied, Paul says in Romans. But he's true. So we get to encourage one another. So Psalm 50, listen to this. Verse 10 says, for all the animals of the forest are mine. This is God speaking. For all the animals of the forest are mine. And I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, would I not tell you for all the world is mine and everything in it? Do I eat the meat of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. Woo! Why do I feel like I've never read that before? <laughs> Oh my gosh, make thankful. So whatever your current financial, I think it's so interesting that that is following a passage about God owning all the provision of the world is that he's saying, the sacrifice I want from you is thankfulness. I have to just kind of sit back and be like, mm, yeah, that's called maturity in Christ, y'all. <laughs> that's called maturity in Christ. When we thank him, in the middle of the struggle, when we thank him in the midst of the storm, I confessed to my husband this morning that I was being like a two-year-old and I, I forget what it was about, but in my heart and mind, I was rile, riling against God. How can you allow these circumstances to happen when, you know, I know better. Isn't that just the way of a two-year-old mom and dad? I know better. I'm going to fight you about getting in the car seat. I'm going to fight you about eating the chicken. I'm going to fight you about eating the apple. I'm going to fight you about bedtime because I think I know better. And the Lord was like, you're still fighting me in your heart. And I'm like, oh, okay. So what do you want me to do today? And he's like, be faithful with what I've told you to do. So what do I do on the days when I'm not serving? I'm going to make my podcasts. I've got a list that I'm going through that I have promised to speak on. And I just feel such an urgency to speak on all of it because it's about living from a place of truth. The one true source is who? Jesus. That's right. So when we go to his word and we're grounded in his word and we're living from that place, that is living the abundant life in Christ. That is the abundant life in Christ. He says he'll give us everything else too. If not in this life, then in the life to come. And whether or not he blesses, we praise him. Can I get an amen? And when we do things his way, he says good things will happen. But at the same time, Job 121, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as Christians, 
We have to encourage one another. We have to grow into maturity and we get to keep the vision that he's planted in our heart. He's not saying give up the vision if it is of God. How do we know if it's of God? Okay, so if your vision is to have like a $32 million yacht that you just sit on and sip martinis on, it's probably not from God. Sorry to burst your bubble on that. Um, It's probably not. Does God give that to people? He allows certain people to have that. That's the best it's going to get for them if they're not walking with Jesus. If they're not obeying his word, that's the best they're ever going to get. For those who are in Christ, we have an eternal glory coming that is better than anything in this life. So we get to use the 24 hours we have in a day. You, me, Oprah, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. So we just get to reimagine what does it look like? What are the skills that I need to either get or partner with? Maybe somebody else has the skills that you need to grow the impact so that we can move forward in our finances, so that we can move forward in creating that passive income, so that we can be more generous. So generosity is a principle. The Lord says 10% is just a starting point. All of our lives belong to God. So we always want to be giving, even if we're impoverished. If you can, if you can give, if you have the faith to give, give. Don't give stupidly, y'all. Don't don't be ridiculous. Don't like test God with that. Don't, don't be testing God in that way. I mean, it does say, well, does it say to test God? I think it's talking about like, you can't outgive God. And that's true. You can't outgive God. Um. And I will also say that there have been certain times in my life when I felt led to give and I didn't have it to give and I did it anyway and God blessed it. So there are principles and then there's the Holy Spirit. And what we don't want to do is like spend money on things that we don't have money to buy. Like these bracelets, like I would not be going and buying jewelry or clothes or any of that stuff right now because it's not in the budget. And I live from, I have to live honestly. So it's food, shelter, clothing time. (laughs) You know, that's right. Don't put your Lord to the test. That's right. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you. Okay. Um, So I wrote down a couple of things we want to do. So how do we increase our finances? Because that is the promise of what we are here to do together. How do we increase our finances? Let me tell you some stories of hope. This is so cool. So in um, 2021, I was like, that's it. I am going to hit my first $10,000 a month, month. And honestly, um, We had had one month of fundraising in the history of our ministry where we had more than $7,000 come in. And if I'm being honest, um, most of our married life, we have not made more than like $40,000 a year. I'm not even kidding. I don't know why. I don't know why I look back and I'm like, well, how did that happen? Like what? Anyway, that's not the point. The point is you get to decide as a child of God who was given dominion over your life, you get to decide that you want to grow financially and you get to take that before the Lord and say, Lord, you know, is my motivation from you? Let's get that right. And then let's move forward because you have gifts and skills and abilities that nobody else has been given and that God has gifted to you. And if you are walking with Christ, I'm convinced that the reason he's given you those gifts is to bless others and to grow your impact. And so we don't want any lies blocking the way. We don't want any like small thinking, which could also be lies, uh, getting in the way. I had a lot of small thinking for a long, long time. And now it's like my vision to empower other people to grow their income and how they're going to do it. So in 2021, I hit my first $5,000 month. And then It went to 8,000. I had my first $8,000 a month. It wasn't consistent. It still is not consistent. I'm not, I'm not, I'm nowhere near that right now, but that's not the point. The point is I got a taste of what it takes to move in that direction and the choices that I had to make to move in that direction. So we're going to cover some of those principles right now. So this is the part you want to write down. There are like three different categories. Um, And this is what you really want to come back to later. So write down connections, relationships, opportunities. That's like all in one area of focus. Another area of focus is going to be your goals, weekly, monthly, and annual goals. Sometimes it's even just daily goals. I'm going to tell you what mine are right now. And then the third thing is that all wealth comes from God. He is the one who opens the door. He is the one that shuts the door. We're responsible for our efforts. The Bible says if man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. 
So we're all responsible for our efforts and putting it out there and in doing our best. But the, it's the Lord who brings the increase. So, okay. Um, some financial principles. You've got to make more money than you need to live on. I've got to make more money than I need to live on. Um, and we need to pray for breakthrough and then do the work. So what is the work? There's this really scary word that nobody likes this word, but this word will make you money. Are you ready for it? It's one word. <laughs> the word is discipline. <laughs> discipline will make you money. Discipline and strategy will make you money over time for sure. So dis discipline is a secret weapon to many blessings. It's not, I can't have this or I can't buy this or I can't do this. It's I'm going to choose something better so that I can get something better. So the discipline might be like, once you start making more money, um, what am I going to do with that money? Right. Or it could just be, I'm going to discipline myself to not be um, discouraged in the morning. I'm just going to say, I am not allowed to give in to discouragement. That might be the discipline that you need to work on. I know for me coming out of COVID, I had to be gracious with myself. If you're sick right now, you need to be gracious with yourself. Either Jesus is your provider or he's not. And if he's your provider, you get to ask him, what do I need to do today? Okay. Do I need to rest? Do I need to rest for an hour and then get busy? Okay. Then do that. Um, there were many days. I remember counting the days from when I first got really sick with COVID. It was like, I stopped counting around day like 45. That was when I finally, the symptoms finally went away. There were many days coming out of COVID in February and in, even into March where I had like two good hours a day. I'm not even kidding. And the rest of the day, I was just so sick. I couldn't even work. If that is you, then the discipline for you is going to be to trust God. If that is not you, if you're feeling better, like I am now, and you're like, okay, I took on, you know, an angel investor job, waiting tables, Ubering, whatever it is, um, just to get through, then the temptation is going to be to stay in that job and not push to the next level because it's scary to push to the next level. But you get to ask God, you get to ask the Lord, is it time for me to push to the next level? And what does that look like? And that's exactly what I did on Good Friday. And then I'm seeing the fruit of that now. I'm seeing job interviews come in. I'm seeing conversations happen. Um, haven't been given the offer that I need yet um, or the offers. But I, I think part of that is because um, I really want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> I really want to work with you. And so if you're like, Katie, I want to work with you too, then please DM me. Let's find a way to work together because my rates are dropping like crazy. <laughs> if you've talked to me recently, you're like, I can't afford that. My prices have gone down. <laughs> We're having a fire sale over here. <laughs> And maybe that's what you need to do with your clients too, is be like, oh, we're at a fire sale and just say, do I make more Ubering or do I make more? You know what I mean? Just saying. All right. So discipline, discipline is going to look differently depending on where you're at, but it's always going to look like surrendering to what Christ says is true every day and often throughout the day, making those goals. What do I need to make weekly, monthly, whatever to get over the threshold um, into a better place? Um, and then thinking about something better. So really having that vision is going to be, uh, captivating for you. What do you really want your dream life to look like? Um, for me, my dream life is we're at a retreat center. We actually own it. It's our property. We have people that come and stay with us who are working on their health and healing. I've got a cup, you know, a handful of clients every week that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. I'm doing speaking and teaching and art and gardening and healing and restoring. And I love to write. I love writing. So I'm writing and creating books uh, on the regular and um, just empowering people to live their best life, especially um, those who are just new to the faith or growing in their faith, the young moms. I want to help them grow their income from home and get to that place of passive income so they can raise their children, right? Can I get an amen? Is it so wrong that a woman wants to raise her own child? Come on. So we've got to find the financial resources. And actually, I know I'm so excited. I learned how to do all of that, y'all. And I can help you with it. I now know how to create low content books, high content books. I know how to bring a book to market. I know how to help you market that book. Oh, um, yeah, I do know how to do all that. But I just realized, like, am I allowed to talk about that? Anyway, 
Um, I hope I'm allowed to talk about that. My point is that there are all kinds of ways that moms can work from home and make money and still be present for their families. And that's what I want to encourage um, women and men to do is find those. It's probably not going to be just one thing. It's going to be a whole bunch of different things. That's where the offer ladder comes in. So the offer ladder is like, what do you, what do you give away for free? That's going to draw people to you that you can serve them with that. Maybe, you know, if you have a lemonade stand, maybe it's little samples of lemonade, right? And then you sell a cup for five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. And then that would be the next rung on your ladder. And then maybe you do catering events and that's another rung on your ladder and you go to weddings and that's another rung on your ladder. So I think I'm catering and weddings. That's kind of the same thing. But anyway, you get my point. We've got to be thinking about these things. And that's what I want to help you do is be focused on what you can control and trust God with the outcomes because you, you are not in control of the outcomes. I wish you were, you're not, he's in control. Just like I spent that thousand dollars on ads and zero opt-ins. Are you kidding me? You know, what's so funny is that I'm running ads for somebody else right now and they're getting great results. <laughs> I'm like, It's God. It's God who gives the increase. It's God who says you can put everything in place, but if he doesn't bless it, it's not going to happen. And so we do the work and we trust him. Our lives are meant to glorify God more than anything else. Our lives are meant to glorify God. That is the whole purpose. And so what do you think it does for the watching world when they see you struggle, but they see you not give up? What does that do for them? It gives them hope. Can I tell you, I just got the biggest compliment of my entire life last night. Our son, who is very sick and has been very sick for many years, don't, don't worry. He's getting, he's doing the health health treatments that he needs, but God is going to heal him in his timing. And I believe it's going to be soon. But our son, he said to us, the reason I am a man of faith is because I've watched you and dad not give up. And so for you, friend, your family is watching. The next generation is watching. You are a living testimony. I love the thing that says you are the only Bible some people will ever read. Um, there's, it resonates with me so deeply. There's another, um, story it's called the Inn of the sixth happiness. It's a movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The Inn of the sixth happiness. And this woman goes from England to China. True story. Uh, I think it's Amy Carmichael. She goes to China to be a missionary. She works in an orphanage and there's like a magistrate over the town and she lives there for I don't know, at least a decade, maybe longer. And then a war comes to the area and everybody has to flee. The orphans have to escape. And the magistrate comes to um, the woman. There's a scene in the movie and it says, and he's telling his scribe right down in this book that I became a Christian this day. I trusted in Christ. And it was because of this woman who worked at this orphanage all these years, watching her life, watching her testimony and saying, God is better. Jesus is better. His ways are better. Do things his way. It is life and salvation for your soul. And so you just never know who's watching you. You never know who's watching you, but God is faithful. He is faithful. He will complete the good work that he has um, ordained for you and in your life. He will complete the good work he started in your life. And also he will complete the work through your life as you trust in him. I just want to thank you so much for being with me. Um, Just to recap, um, oh, there was one more thing I was going to tell you. So the discipline, discipline is the biggest thing. And asking God, what does it look like to be disciplined today? What does it look like to be faithful to you today as an entrepreneur, as somebody who's on that journey? So um, what I've committed to this week is, again, doing a podcast every day this week. So even yesterday, it was unbelievable. It, it took so long to get the podcast done last night. I don't know why the prep work just took forever. Oh, I know why. I was tired. <laughs> we had a bunch of uh, housekeeping meetings in the morning that we had to go take care of, and I was exhausted. And I took 20 minutes and drank a cup of coffee and and then started doing the research. It took me hours because my brain was slow. But I got the podcast done, and I've committed to doing that. I've committed to doing a podcast every day this week. Um, and then I've also committed to doing 125. I need to write it down in front of me right now. It's already on my big board. I have a big board of goals that I'm praying over every day, but 125 reach outs a day. So if you don't have money for ads, that's what you need to be doing. And you could do, or not, a, not a day, sorry, not a day. I wish it, I could do that many in a day. You can't, I think 60 is the limit on, um, 
if you're doing Facebook direct messages, I think the limit is 60 per day. Um, if you do more than that in a day, they'll lock you out. So 125 grassroots messages in a week or more. That's my plan this week. You can check back in with me on Friday and see how I did. Um, and what that means is you're just reaching out to the people that you know. Um, for me, I I'm starting with a group that I have and I'm just saying, hey, you know, I haven't connected with you in a while. I'm really excited because um, I'm doing a new podcast now. You can get to know me through that. And the whole point of the podcast is to point people to Jesus in the big four areas of their life. So faith, finances, fitness and family and relationships. Um, so if you know anybody who's interested in that, please share my podcast podcast with them. I'm still doing life and business coaching. I'm also doing public speaking, and I would love to be a resource for you if you hear of anybody who needs a speaker or a coach. Please write back to me. Let me know what you're working on and what is a good referral for you. Do you have a business you've started or is somebody in your family starting a business? Let me know. I would love to refer people to them. So that's what I'm committed to saying. And you can watch this again, like write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, I don't always hear back from people. That's okay. If you hear back from one out of a hundred, that's success. <laughs> that's the measure. Okay. One out of a hundred, one percent is going to say yes. <laughs> um, okay. So then, um, I'm doing the podcast and if I get that much done every day this week, if I, you know, I break down that 125 reach outs, it's going to be average about like, like, let's say 35 reach outs a day. Um, if I can get that done in a podcast done podcasting, this part takes up, you know, however long it takes to record, it takes about two more hours to get it on all the platforms and to create the graphics and stuff right now for me, that's about how much. So that takes, um, and then the prep. So that's, that's about five hours a day that I spend crafting these <laughs> podcasts, believe it or not. And then doing the reach outs on top of that. And then that's a full day right now. Um, so that that's me at full capacity doing what I need to do. Um, for you, what is full capacity for you? Cause I just want to encourage you to be aware of that. So I don't want you to leave this podcast and be like, that was great. I got all jazzed up. I want you to have one thing that you take action on right now that you can do. So maybe it's, um, you know, you decide, okay, I'm going to do 125 reach outs this week. I'm going to take the challenge with Katie. We're going to do it together. 125 reach outs by, by, well, for me, Friday is a full day. So it actually has to be by Thursday at, um, noon. That's going to really push me. So then I'm going to do 125 divided by what's it? Oh, divided by three. Can I even do that many reach outs? That's 41 a day. Yes, I can. Okay, so 41 a day between now and Thursday at noon. And then I've got my podcast every day that I've committed to. And that is what I'm going to focus on right now for moving my business forward and my finances forward. So for you, what is manageable that you can move forward on right now? You know, sometimes if we're feeling overwhelmed and we can't even make a decision, please go take a nap. This is your Auntie Katie, your Coach Katie, whatever you want to call me. Just make it nice. <laughs> telling you that if you are overwhelmed, you need to rest. That is the best thing that you can do. You've got to trust that God is for you, that he's working even when you're not. That is why he gave us daylight for work and night for rest. When the sun goes down, I just want to challenge you. Yes, there are going to be times when you push through the dark, but don't make that the rule. Make that the exception. God has given you 24 hours in a day. He's given you six days a week for work. I just want to encourage you to trust that, to trust God in that. Um, there was a season about a year and a half ago when I forgot about that. And um, I worked straight through like 12 hour days for six weeks. And I injured my back so badly from sitting at the computer like this that it took, um, it took a very long time to heal, at least six weeks to heal. I was trying to remember exactly how long it took. So it's not worth it. It's not, it's just not worth it. Your full capacity today might be different than your full capacity tomorrow. Yeah. I see some of those. Yep. Um, so I love you guys. If you want to schedule an appointment with me, um, right now, um, send me a message at katie at katiespeaking.com. You can send me a uh, Facebook message too. Um, we can talk about that. 
I'm trying to figure out what my coaching practice is going to look like going forward. And uh, you can help me with that <laughs> by letting me know what you need and, and what is your capacity right now. Um, so decide what is capacity for today? What is capacity for this week? Just one decision. No need for overwhelm with this. God is our provider. And um, let's just go ahead and pray. <laughs> Father God, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to know you and to be reminded of your principles. We are to work. We are to commit our work to you. We are to give. 10% is just a starting point. All of our lives belong to you, God. You made us. And everything that we have is yours. Even our sickness, even our weakness, even our limits. You're the one who determines that. And so I pray that we would just live honestly before you, that we would live true before you, that we wouldn't be afraid of our limits, that we would trust that you are strength, even in our weakness. When we are weak, you are strong. As your sons and daughters, we are so grateful to you, God. Thank you that you are working on our behalf. Thank you that we get to decide how we're going to spend our days. We are not meant to be slaves to anything, not even to our debt. Father, I pray for every single person that is each person that's listening, that the person that's listening, that's in debt right now, like me, I pray father that whether we have debt or are debt free, that our hope is not in our financial status. Our hope is is in you. And you've already given us the victory on the cross. You've already canceled our debt with you. And that we are to rejoice in our salvation, first and foremost. Your word says that we get to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving in Psalm 50. It says that. That's what you want, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. So, Father, we just lay everything we have at your feet, all of our gifts, all of our talents, all of our limits, all of our choices, and we say, Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom and the faith that we need for this day. My husband often reminds me of that prayer. Give me the measure of faith required for this day, Lord. Give me the measure of faith required for this day. Father, blessings, peace, and joy in Christ Jesus. And on my friends who are listening right now, thank you, God, for each person. I pray, Father, that you would bless their businesses, you would bless their finances, that we will create services and products that solve problems in this world, that have a ripple effect, that bless people, that help people, and that um, those resources will be used to honor you, God, to glorify you, God, and to bless others to meet needs where they are. Father, you are the God of the universe. Thank you for the shelter over our head. Thank you for the food in the refrigerator. Thank you for the money in our bank accounts. Thank you, God, for everything that you've given us. Even thank you for our need. Because it reminds us that we have you. Meet our needs, Lord Jesus. Meet our my friend's need right now. Help our help her to believe. Help him to believe that you are making a way, that you are the way maker. And may we be focused on that reality and do our part whether that's to rest or work. Thank you, God. You are truly our hope and our salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we cannot wait to come back in the near future and say, the Lord provided the increase. The Lord made a way where there was no way. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ah, friends, I love you. I love you. I'm so thankful for you guys. Have a beautiful day, and I'll catch you later. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.